Good day. It's Paul Sirico here from Fieldcom Group. Today we're going to be talking about the PA DIM specification with, um, with Frank and Occam. Um, and if you don't mind, um, we're going to, we had quite a few people sign up. We still have a few more that we're waiting for. So if you give me a minute, um, we'll, uh, we'll be right back with you. Thanks. Okay, thanks again. Uh, Paul Sirico here. We're doing the PA DIM webinar this morning with our special guests, um, Frank Fangler and Akim Laubenstein. And they are going to be um, giving us a great presentation. Um, and I'm going to turn on their video cams right now, send things over to Frank and Akim, and we can get going. Okay, so let's do it. Um, some ground rules here before we start. Um, first of all, there's a chat box. Um, if you want to send chats, um, you can do that. Um, we prefer that you ask questions in the question box in the question pane. Um, when you ask a question, if it's if it's appropriate, I'll be I'll be answering it online. Um, and we're going to have a few minutes for questions um, at the end of this at the end of the presentation. Okay, so take it away, Akam. Okay, thank you, Paul. Now let's start with the PADM overview presentation. PADM is the Process Automation Device Information Model, and a field group. Project Group has been working on this topic uh, in the meantime since a couple of years. Uh, very closely uh, connected to the NAMU uh, working group that works on the NAMU open architecture. But that we will see later on in the PowerPoint. So, setting the stage for the 21st process of century of process automation. And um, in this century, Information models, digital transformation, and IT-OT conversions will play a um, important role. And therefore, let's start with some definitions as we define information model, digital transformation, IT-OT convergence in this presentation. So first of all, the information model. Um, it's a nested and hierarchical description of an asset, including identification, configuration, methods, and a role in a system. So the, the virtual representation of a real device and an object model. We consider the digital transformation to be using end-to-end -end digital systems to enable open information exchange and improve operational efficiency. And we will see in this presentation that specifically end-to-end -end open information exchange is important for the next uh, topic here, IT, OT convergence, the removal of barriers to information access that advances operational effectiveness between process and IT teams. So let's see. Currently, we are facing a hierarchical automation world, hierarchical automation systems, DCS, for example. Um, on the lower end, we have devices, then we have um, various network layers, and we have systems. And on top of the systems, advanced applications that may be running in the cloud that may be running in local clouds or uh, also in other environments. And um, what we are currently working on with many people, many groups, is to converge towards an IP connectivity uh, that includes standard information models and that also includes semantic information that will allow us planned wide information exchange, planned wide communication, as you see on the right side, what we call IoT enabled communication. Um, information from devices, for example, is not anymore blocked through controllers um, who only consume a part of the device information, but with uh, new technologies, we will enable this seamless information access from the cloud down to the devices. 
And this presentation is about how we do this. So let's start again with where we are today. So here you see a typical system structure with a DCS, a DCS connected to a field network. You can have a mode IO with hard devices on this network. You can have uh, FF devices through an HSE uh, uh, link, for example. You can have wireless hard devices through a wireless hard gateway connected to a DCS. And this has been advanced over the last couple of years already with FDI. And FDI does two things. On one hand, it um, enables device descriptions and device packages that represent all device information in a in a um, let's say machine readable form um, maps device information also into objects this is one thing so you can configure devices for example it's, that's um, one use of fdi the other use of fdi is it also defines a device information model and this is an opc ua information model that's uh, part of FDI and this OPC information model um, contains whatever a device vendor describes in the device description. So in the EDD you describe what the information model in FDI contains. This is device specific uh, but already allows to access the information by OPC UA clients. However the OPC UA client of course has to have device-specific knowledge. That's available today, that's begun, and is implemented in, in several cases already in FDI host systems. Uh, FDI can also be used um, locally on handheld devices, um, whether uh, on, on, on proprietary operating systems, but uh, FDI Components. Um, provides a set of FDI host components uh, can also be used on on Android, or on um, on non Microsoft devices. So Android, for example, or or iOS devices. That's a kind of new feature that has been uh, announced a couple of weeks ago. So far, we supported Microsoft, but now we are with the host components completely system independent. So that's one step towards um, IoT convergence. Um, and what we want to head for is make data available. And as I said before, this is already done with FDI in a device specific manner. Make data available to process the data on higher levels in IT networks, in public or non public clouds in business systems. And with PADIM, we have now gone a step further. PADIM is not any more device specific. PADIM describes a set of standard information uh, that is applicable to all process automation devices. And Frank will later on give us um, some more details about that, what it is. But it covers the typical pressure, differential pressure, flow, level transmitters, for example, and positioners, and um, allows a standard view on devices. So enables applications that are not anymore device specific or vendor specific. It's completely neutral. And by that, it's much easier to write applications on the IT level. And this is the first step to provide data from devices um, in a form that is easy to process for, for higher level applications. This is PADIM. And PADIM can be implemented currently on for example, FDI 
servers or FDI uh, gateway devices and can map data from existing hard or FF or Profit Bus or other protocols to an OPC UA information model. The other important technology that is upcoming, and you see it already on the screen, is Ethernet APL. And there was a uh, specific webinar already on Ethernet APL. Maybe you have um, attended to it, then uh, you know already a lot about it. Ethernet APL allows to bring Ethernet in the field to um, the typical process automation devices uh, and allow for now to connect hard IP devices or Profinet or Ethernet IP devices, for example. To an Ethernet. That's another important enabling technology. And if we go further in the development, we see that the next step then would be to bring also OpenCUA as a protocol down to the devices and bring the information model, the PADIM, but also device specific information model down to the devices. And by doing that, you have uh, seamless communication from the cloud. To down to the device, and um, yeah, this would then fulfill already the requirement I've described before to um, have IO to IT convergence. So that's the overview. Let's go into more details. So the question is, in principle, I've answered it already. Uh, how to close? how to cross the OT, IT chasm. And um, the most important requirement here is that data is not lost in translation across the system so that we find a way to make data from the lowest level available in the IT level. And the other important topic here is to add also Semantic information, this will also be explained in more detail later on. Semantic information shall allow to make information machine readable. That's also important uh, to process information from devices, from field devices. So let's have a close look on OPC UA as an enabling technology. Here's a comparison. Um, between 4 to 20 milli hard and feedback protocols, other protocols, and um, down to OPC UA um, via TCP and UDP. And what, what this table shows is, on one hand, that uh, the communication uh, using those protocols is limited to a certain layer of the um, process automation layers you have seen before in the pyramid. And the other thing you can see is that OPC UA covers all these layers. And OPC UA, different from those other protocols, is also accepted by the um, information technology guys. And therefore, from our point of view, OPC UA is a very important technology to achieve the goal we've described before, allowing easy access to information across a process automation system. The other enabling technology is Ethernet APL. Ethernet APL will allow to bring Ethernet down to the field device, providing power on the line, um, having a two-wire uh, communication line with 10 megabit uh, data transmission rate for duplex, allowing long distances, 1,000 meters, and um, also allow to install the network and the network components in hazardous areas. That's important for the process industry. That's not only important. That's, in principle, a condition for the process industry to use Ethernet in the field. So but with APL that's upcoming now, we can do that and we can have 
those Ethernet protocols at the device level. And now there is also customer requirements that um, um, help us and also also drove us to work on PADIM. Um, I suppose you all know the NAMO, that's a German, well, an international German organization um, of the chemical industry. And um, in this organization, they define their requirements towards uh, automation systems and also devices. So their requirements towards automation vendors in principle. And uh, recently, uh, it's already some years ago, they have uh, defined the so-called NAMO open architecture. And with the NAMO open architecture, the NAMO has set the requirement to get access to device information that's available in systems, in DCS, and on field level. And um, they have said they want to do this because they see benefit in processing those data in what they call monitoring and optimization applications. And this is what I said before, those can be applications running uh, at the plant level, but can also be central applications, and then it's called central monitoring and optimizations for advanced analytics, for example, historian, central HMI, and many other things. And what the NAMO has also said, they did not want to modify the existing control systems because the existing DCS are reliable, they are proven technology, and they do not want to take risk to implement something new. And therefore, they propose to open up the system with the so-called NAMO open architecture, allowing access to information on various levels of the process control systems, which you see here on the left side. There can be um, information access on the device level through OPC UA, uh, access through OPC UA on the DCS uh, controller level, and this information is then transferred, transferred um, via OPC UA to the monitoring and uh, optimization applications. In a little bit more detail, this is what uh, the NAMO did. The NAMO defined a set of standard parameters they would like to see for different typical process automation device types. And they also defined um, the semantics that they want to add to those parameters so that, uh, in order to make those parameter set machine readable. And those semantics um, are uh, specified in the IEC Common Data Dictionary in Frank will give us also details on that one. And NAMO has also collaborated with the ZVI, that's the vendor organization of the electrical um, and uh, electronic industry, also in Germany. And in this collaboration, they have defined um, First of all, the requirements in detail for such an information model, and they also uh, made it mandatory that such information model should be implemented in OPC UA. And um, they use this collaboration also to interface to other organizations. In this case, uh, Feed from Group and the OPC Foundation and uh, Feed from Group in its working group has done the implementation of the NOAA information model requirements into OPC UA. So it was a very good collaboration. NAMO uh, defined the requirements and our working group um, implemented that and created PADIM as an OPC UA information model for process automation devices. So, and with this, I think we have got the basis to cross the bridge, yeah, to, 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 to close the chasm. We have peered in with OPCA technology as an enabler and with Ethernet 
IP, Ethernet API. We also have Ethernet IP, but in this case, Ethernet API is important. And this will lead, from our point of view, to a um, migration path from where we are today. And today, this is traditional feed paths, this is hard. And today, we will be able already now to implement OPC UA and the PADIM information model on a gateway level and map the information that comes from hard devices or field bus devices into this PADIM information model. And any application would have a standardized way to access um, device data. This can be used for brownfield. A brownfield plan can be extended by adding such a gateway. And first products are on the market to do this. The second step will be what we call the second channel. Um, and this requires Ethernet APL and also OPC UA on the device level. So we've talked about Ethernet APL. Ethernet APL will allow to run Ethernet protocols on the field devices so on the, and also on the remote I/O. So, and um, it's very probable that at first the current field bus protocols, Profinet, Hard IP, Ethernet IP, will be used on that level because DCSs already support those protocols and they can be applied immediately and um, can be applied to exchange uh, control information between remote I.O. and field devices and the controllers and the DCS. And it is expected that devices or remote I.O. will also um, include a second channel in future. And that second channel will implement the OPC UA communication protocol and PADIM as information model. And with this, you map already on the I.O. level the hard data to PADIM, or you map already directly in the Ethernet field device the data on PADIM, and then the data can be used again on the gateway level or on a higher level. This is a migration step towards OPC UA on field level. Start with current field bus Ethernet protocols, and then the third step will be what we call the native OPC UA device. Uh, in that case, we use only one protocol on the Ethernet APL level, not anymore the second channel. There will be only OPC UA. The DCS will also talk OPC UA, and control information will be transferred through OPC UA. You have uh, still the remote I.O. mapping data from hard uh, to the uh, EA DIM information model, and you have the PA DIM information model implemented on the Ethernet devices, and they are talking directly through OPC UA, um, and the second channel will not be possible anymore, and this completely opens up the system architecture. and uh, enables a seamless information flow from the device up to the cloud. This is what we see happening in future. And I think now it's up to Frank to give us some more details about the protocol independent PADM. What are the key points on PADM? Uh, one of the key points is semantic identification. So what, what does semantic identification mean? So you see here on the slide, um, somebody is thinking on the left-hand side, ah, I would like to have a nice Jaguar, a nice car. And um, the other guy is asking on the right-hand side, okay, what is he talking about? Is it a car? Is it a cat? So you see also in the spelling, it's just the last letter, which is different. So what 
what does he talk about? And and that is communication. That is semantic. That that people speak to each other, and you can imagine. You speak to your customer, customer supplier conversation. I would like to buy a nice Jaguar and uh, what do you get delivered? So it's a very important piece, uh, semantics within communication, not just between humans, but also between machines. And that's an important topic of PA DIM. Next slide. Achim? Okay, what we are talking is between sender and receiver. So, um, and what is the Jaguar? It's here in this slide, the symbol. The symbol is, is a term what is exchanged between the sender and receiver, and it's related to an object. It can be a physical object or an abstract object. And the definition, what it is, is defined in a so-called description. The description is identified with, with EADs, and um, this is where the definition is, what is the term, the symbol, the jargon in this case, what is the meaning, and it describes a, a physical object. The EAD or semantic ID is the term which references within the dic dictionary the, the symbol. Okay. Next question is, so if we now know what we are talking about, why, why do we need a name? And that I think can be also very easy explained on, on this slide. So if, if you see you have, a, have one Jaguar on the right hand side, on the left hand side, but there can be also more. If you now click, then you see you have more of them and what do you need to do? You need to provide names, Oscar, Bruno, and type plates for devices. So that is how we distinguish between different instances or different yeah, uh, Jaguars. So who is who is who? Okay. Now going to the information model in, in more detail. You saw the, the, the picture on the left hand side already from Arim's slides with the NOAA um, information model and there we see the same. We see a server, we see a client. So that are the sender and receiver of information. Um, the OPC UA server knows the parameters, so all the symbols and also the semantic IDs to it defined by, by the EADs. Um, so knows what, what he is talking, the same. On the other side, the OPC UA client knows what, what is existing and, and what, he, uh, what is needed. PADIM defines the information model for process automation devices in the first step. So for pressure, temperature, flow, level, um, valve positioner, um, but there will be more, more to come. It's a, based on a standardized set of, of information and what is defined is information for identification of, of devices, diagnostics information, process variables, core parameter. It is implemented according requirements from Namur, Namur Open Architecture and um, maps all this information against the uh, semantic um, information um, defined in the IEC 621987 Common Data Dictionary. So this enables to access device information from any device without the knowledge how it looks like. Every device which supports the PADIM, there is a mandatory set of parameters of information available where uh, IT application, which IT application can use. Also, PADIM is harmonized with the NOAA information model, so that uh, is a close uh, working collaboration. On the next slide, you see now how we started to define the information model. The starting point is from use cases. 
So first, uh, Namur was identifying the use cases which should be uh, covered. And then in the second step, the needed parameter were identified. So use cases are unique identification of an asset, of a device, automated as built, um, dimension design check. So if I operate it in the, in the wide range, uh, the device life cycle so that I can do a backup for, for certain parameters that I check on multivariable possibility. Uh, so meaning how many measurements do I have within the device? Could I use some more variables out of the device for some purposes? Um, device health to get information about the status of the of the diagnostic. So that are the use cases. And in the step, second step, the parameters which are needed for these use cases to make them happen were identified and identified also by defining them in the IEC 62187 uh, data dictionary, common data dictionary. So before we go in, in the details of the PA DIM information model, let's define some definitions or clarify some definitions. So what is a device? A device is a globally unique physical component identified with product instance URI defined by the manufacturer. So this is often stamped on the outside of a device as a QR code. So that's the identification of an instance of a device. The asset ID. The asset ID is a user writable alphanumeric character sequence uniquely identifying a device. This ID is provided by the integrator or user of the device. So they can write the asset ID, they define it. The product instance URI is given by the manufacturer, so just readable, not to be cannot be changed, but the asset ID can be changed by the user. And we have the signal tag. A signal tag is an alphanumeric character sequence uniquely identifying a measuring or control point. And a device can have more than one signal, more than one signal tag, so a number of, of measurements. And that I would like to show in the next slide how the architecture looks like. So with PIDIM, we have invented a new information architecture, which is not function centric, like, like most people had in the past when we had, let's call devices, which has just one process variable, not having multi-variable uh, transmitters. So there, we looked often to a device, you can operate it, you have diagnostic, you have configuration. And then below, because it was then added permanently, it's, it's more process variable. So you would, could, you had to jump between the configuration menu to the operation and so on. With PADIM, we have a signal centric model. And that means um, you see it on the right hand side in the picture. We, we a device can have different many signals. And this could be, for example, a temperature transmitter, which has, can measure two temperatures. It can have temperature one, have temperature two. So this, all the functions which are needed to, to view this value, but also to configure this value, are under this signal, so together. On the other hand side, you have also the asset as such, so the device. You need to identify the device. You would like to have diagnostics for the device, so which is the device health. And of course, administration, uh, you need also one example could be you would like to set the uh, language for the uh, local display. So that are covered then under the asset. And um, to, uh, to show it, there are these uh, points. So green is the asset, orange is uh, for the signals, and that you see in this slide. So um, in the middle, you, you see the orange bullet. The orange bullet shows the signal, and you can have there many signals for this uh, device. So for a temperature transmitter, as an example, it would be temperature one, temperature two, so you would have twice uh, two signals, uh, signal identifier one would be temperature one and two uh, temperature two. 
the green bullets uh, mark what is in what belongs to the asset, so the device. Um, the, the device has asset, and what we did in PIDIM, we defined it all as interfaces, and that has a, a beauty that you can reuse it in uh, many other information models. So on the white uh, uh, side, you see the two interfaces which were derived from uh, the DI model, uh, OPC UA uh, part 100 for devices. Um, we uh, reuse there the interfaces for uh, iTech nameplate, which contains the asset ID, and the iVendor nameplate, which contains a number of uh, information about which manufacturer is it, which model, which hardware software revision, and also the product instance URI you see at the, at the bottom. So that is, is uh, let's call it for me, the new serial number for the instance. That is the information you get via this interface. Within PRDIM, we used, we used also the, the device health interface, which you see in the middle at the bottom, um, where we get the device health information with description possible cause suggested action and the Namur NE107 um, status. Above, we have the administration interface where, for example, as said, you can set display language, state of last change, you can do also a factory set. So that are common features which you need for, for all devices. And, and that is all defined as an as a interface. Um, and based on um, the Namur open architecture as well as the device uh, core parameter defined in Namur uh, recommendation 131. All of this parameter, which you see here, you see uh, have uh, has a dictionary reference, um, dictionary entry for the common data dictionary for the IEC 61987. So for all of this defined parameter, um, we use it use the definition which is in the common data dictionary. So on the next slide, we are going now more in the details of the signals. And the signals are a very important part um, for this information model. We, this is an extension of the OPC UA part eight. So what we created is a signal variable type. And the signal variable type is available for analog and discrete um, signals. And there is also uh, the possibility to simulate them. And so you can reuse it also in, in any other information model and would have a common, unique uh, uh, way of, of, for example, simulation of, of, of values. This variables can use at, at any object. And um, therefore, on the right hand side, we uh, have the object model. And this object model uses this signal variables and has also then assigned the signal tag to it, what I explained before. So the signal tag defines uh, the name of the signal. And um, it has also then methods if, if needed. For example, there is often zero point adjustment needed or for position and auto adjust. So that are all then uh, coming with a, with a signal uh, type object. Okay, next part is on Paul. Um, thank you very okay. much, Frank. That was a really good um, presentation. I really appreciate it. Please put your video camera back up because you're not getting out of here quite so quickly. Um, we're gonna have a couple of questions that we need to go to. Um, but, at, you know, at, uh, Akka, could you go back one slide? I just, I wanna talk a little bit about um, something before we uh, before we move on. And, and what, what I wanna talk about is the, um, you know, is, is, is the fact that, you know, FieldCom Group is a, uh, as we know, it's a, it's a volunteer-driven organization. And the volunteers in FieldCom Group are experts in the process automation industry, more so than, you know, than any other organization um, around we know process automation. And, you know, although we've had Frank provide um, an overview of the PADIM specification this morning, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the extensive amount of volunteer support 
that has gone into the development of this of this specification. Um, it's been under development for you know probably a year and a half, maybe even a, a little bit more. Um, and you know the first release, uh, you know, release candidate is available now that has been um, you know blessed by some of the organizations that are involved in it. Um, but we've had a lot of companies, a lot of our major companies participate in this. And because Fieldcom Group is truly kind of a vendor neutral organization, we provide a um, a great collaboration platform for experts in process automation to get together to develop um, this type of material. So I want to give a little shout out to some of the other companies that have been involved in this. Obviously, AB and ABB, um, you know, Vega, CodeWrites, Siemens, ENH, Emerson, and a number of people from the FCG staff as well. So, um, and I'm sure I've forgotten a few of them. And you know, and and and, and the uh, the orchestra is is drumming to get me off stage because it's too much of an acceptance speech. But anyway. Um, I think that you, uh, you you get the idea that this is a great that this is a great present a, a great collaborative effort and um, so how can you take part in this how can you where can you find things so the specification first of all uh, the specifications are available to all of you as members of Fieldcom Group um, and you can access them through our joint uh, through our share file share file site um, I've provided a link to the share file site there and we have a copy of this specification up and ready for you to be uh to be to, to be downloaded it's a release candidate as we're still buttoning up a couple of couple of minor details um if you don't know how to access that fieldcomgroup.sharefile.com site please um file a support ticket and we'll and and, and and we'll help you out um you know and so you know obviously PADIM is a spec specs in and of themselves don't create products um so and it's incumbent upon Fieldcom Group to create um, products that enable you as members to create PA DIM devices. So um, I'm happy to announce that the PA DIM specification will be incorporated in a future release of the FDI IDE. I think we're calling that IDE um, 1.5, um, and it will be out. Um, you know, end up, call it the end of this year, something like that. Okay. Um, and since this is a, a, a very complicated topic. Um, and it's very, um, you know, integral to the future of the process automation industry. Um, we're going to be doing more workshops and online training uh, for developers of PADIM and look for more information on that uh, later this year. Some of them will be delivered through, um, you know, through webinars and some of them will be white papers and, and things like that. Next slide, please. So I want to I, I want to thank you again. Um, before we go to questions, thank you for attending. This has been a, a phenomenal webinar. Um, and, you know, there's things that you can take. Um, and actually, this first, this first one represents um, one of the questions that has come in from the audience. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that question before I, uh, uh, before I get to the rest of this stuff. And the, the question that came in from the audience is, are there future enhancements planned um, for the PA DIM specification? And I'm going to throw that out to either um, Frank or um, Frank or Akka, whoever wants to answer it, go ahead. Yeah, I think as, as I already mentioned, so PADIM, process automation devices, is the first step for pressure, temperature, level, flow, positioners, and, and what is under discussion already started now is for analyzers uh, to have enhancements, so there will be a next step. Okay. Perhaps important is always to add something, add new parameters. Everybody has often wishes for new parameters. Have the use case in mind. So have first the use case, what you would like to do, and then think about what parameter do I need. Then you have always a good chance to add some. Okay. Another question um, that's come in is, um, I'm going to, I'm not sure how, the, I'm just going to read the question and maybe you guys can understand what it means. Um, the question is how client, consider OPC UA client, can import PA DIM model to access device data. Does that make sense? Apparently not. So you, you need to read again, so I, I, I don't see the question. Okay. I think the question is how can a client import PA DIM model to access device data? So, so generally, the PA DIM uh, uh, is a defined OPC UA uh, yeah, uh, information model. So every server 
OPC UA server, which supports the PA DIM information model. So a server would be in a device um, has this parameter. So, so uh, another device machine or whatever would exactly know what is available within this device. Okay, so you'd browse through an OPC UA client basically and you would be able to see the PA DIM model. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, another question here is, have you decided on um, the time frame um, for when the specs will be out and when we expect systems to be available? So I think I already asked, answered the questions on specs. Um, you know, the spec is available, is available now. Um, but the, uh, um, you know, but the, the, the second, um, the second question, second part of that is systems being available and you know, there's a big trade show that occurs in um, every three years in Germany. It's called Akama. The next version will be in um, the next the next next iteration of that will be in 2021. And our plan is clearly to have um, it's clearly to have um, products available for demonstration, at least at that point in time that are taking advantage of of PADIM and some other, you know, and, and, and some other new technologies that we'll be that we'll be talking about in future webinars. Um, so I think that covers it with the questions. If there's any more that you want to, um, slip in, um, please, uh, do so. And, um, and in the meantime, I'll kind of wrap up here. So things that you can, that you can do, um, one thing that you can certainly do is, um, download the specification. You know, we've told you how to go ahead and do that. Um, second thing you can do is um, join the working group. Join the you know, join the next iteration. Join the the the, the, the PA DIM working group. They're going to start working on revision um, two of the specification um, fairly uh, fairly quickly um, at our next uh, online working group meeting, which is going to be held at the end of June. There will be a kickoff for the next versions of that, um, and then the uh, you know the the um, you know, naturally, um, you know, we, you should start creating FDI device packages as FDI is a precursor um, to uh, to PA DIM. So that's a you know, so that's a big that's a that's a big piece of it. Um, one last question came in here, which is when will tools be available from Fieldcom Group to start working with PA DIM in my development team? And I think I mentioned that the um, FDI IDE 1.5 release is scheduled to. Um, have PADM support, and that's pl currently planned for um, for availability towards the end of uh, end of this year. So, um, anything else, Akam? Do you have anything you'd like to add? I think you're muted, but I I, I fixed your audio. Yeah, the audio is fixed, uh, but uh, Frank answered the questions already, so I don't have anything to add. Okay, Frank, do you have anything to add? No. If okay. there are any questions, so feel free to, to ask. And yes, as you mentioned, join the working group. All righty. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, everybody. This has been a great, um, a great working group. I'm going to plug our next one. We have another one next Tuesday. I know we're taking up a lot of your time, but this is very important stuff. Um, the next one on, uh, on, on next Tuesday is going to be uh, co-hosted by Sean and myself. And the topic is going to be an information session on um, the next gen field device um, working group that we will be kicking off um, at our live at our virtual working group meeting in June, um, and um, the ways that you can participate, what that's all about, and the ways that you can participate in helping to, um, you know, really create some cool field devices that implement some of this new technology that we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks. Um, hope you can join us for that webinar. And until then, um, you know, have a great weekend, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank okay. you for Bye.